Right. Sometimes it's nice to get on your knees <laughs> and uh, do photography this way. So as I say, I'm going to place the camera inside the bushes, looking upwards towards the light. Um, and I'm going to use my zero four five pinhole camera. I've uh, placed an orange filter in it just to uh, darken down the blue in the sky. Uh, it's not. It's a very good day today uh, for doing this because there's little movement in the actual flowers themselves, so they're not moving. Don't want too much motion. I'm just gonna. The uh, dark side uh, securely on the camera, so that's all fastened in. And then I'm going to place the camera inside the uh, the undergrowth on the underside of the undergrowth. I get it something like level, and then just have a look down and try and imagine where these. Uh, that's so all flowers are going to uh, fall within the picture because it's going to be it's going to be a quite a uh, wide angle uh, view with this. So I think that doesn't look too bad actually. So I'm just going to wait now for the actual sun uh, that's fully out at the moment. I just want it to be shrouded slightly by some cloud, and that'll probably stop the pinhole flaring, and I'll get some detail in the sky itself. Um, so I'm going to take a light meter reading. It's going to go behind some cloud in a minute. So, and I'm using Ilford uh, FP4, uh, and I'm developing it in a, a diaphane um, because I'm using and I rate that at 200 ISO, and because I'm using an orange filter uh, which needs one-stop compensation, I'm rating it a metering at 100 ISO rather than 200 ISO. So I'll say, just wait till the sun goes down and then take the meter reading and I can take the photograph. Right, the sun's gone in partially, so it's not as uh, uh, bright. So I'm gonna get the camera closer and show you how I'm gonna meter. So using my uh, uh, hand and light meter, I'm putting it in the instant light reading mode. And I'm just going to take a, an instant light reading and, and you can see the white uh, lumosphere. Uh, I'm going to cover part of that uh, partially with shadow uh, so I get a more accurate reading rather than the full sun hitting it. So I'm just bobbing it in there so I've got half shadow on the lumosphere and half where the sun is. Take a reading and I'm getting 15th of a second at uh, near enough f22 so the next thing i have to do is check on my phone 15th of a second 15th of a second is giving me six and a half seconds i don't know if you can see that on there it's a little bit bright but it's six and a half seconds uh, so that's the reading at the uh, f-stop which is f216 uh, on this pinhole camera. I think it's 216. Let me check. Yeah, F216. So I've metered it at 15th of a second at F22 and at F216 it's six and a half seconds. And the sun's just come out again. So we'll just give it another second. It's going to go in again. And then calculate the uh, reciprocity of FP4 at that. So I'll go into the reciprocity timer and it's telling me 12 seconds so it's a 12 second exposure so i'll just get ready because the sun's going to go out behind the cloud sorry in a second so i'm just going to pull the dark slide out and just wait for the sun to go in we'll get the timer right it's just going in nicely so i'm going to start the timer start the exposure Twelve seconds. Twelve seconds. That's exposure. 
put the dark side back in and we're all done develop that and see what it turns out like I do think sometimes you have to try things differently uh, just to get a different look and a feel to a picture and as I've said before if you don't experiment uh, you never learn anything so uh, we'll just see how this turns out there's a the sun now it's just just behind the cloud I always try and uh, take pictures if I can when there's some cloud and that stops flare coming into the actual uh, pinhole itself So, what was the point of this video? Just taking uh, pictures of flowers. I think um, what it does show is how versatile the actual pinhole camera can be. Uh, you can place them in uh, in, in uh, positions and um, compositions that would be virtually impossible with a, a normal camera. Uh, because they have in, uh, infinite depth of field uh, and you've, uh, you obviously have no focus, etc. You can use them uh, in a, a very unconventional way so that's one thing you could learn from this video that by using the pinhole camera in a different manner in a different composition uh, you can create pictures that are different from the norm which I think is always a good thing also uh, and I've said it before that uh, you don't learn unless you experiment now for all I know this, this could, these pictures could turn out just rubbish so I failed uh, it's not worked but if I hadn't have tried uh, I wouldn't have found out uh, like a while back I posted a video of some tulips uh, and rather again than taking them from the conventional uh, sort of viewpoint pointing down to them using a macro lens maybe to get all that beautiful detail and sharpness I decided to use my pinhole camera and I, I pushed the pinhole camera uh, underneath the tulips and photographed upwards and it turned out to be a really really a nice picture so I think from this video uh, two things can be learned that you have to experiment with cameras like this uh, to get pictures differently and, uh, and it also shows how versatile the pinhole camera uh, can be uh, used in, in a different way so I'll get the film developed and uh, we'll see if it's been a, a success as I uh, say a complete pig's ear we'll just have to see So this is the uh, print that I took with the uh, 045 pinhole camera. I don't print uh, every picture that I take but uh, the ones that I do tend to print more are from pictures from the pinhole camera and uh, cameras like the uh, Holger. I just feel that uh, for certain subjects and it's only a personal preference uh, they do produce a more artistic look rather than a camera that's uh, got a lens that produces uh, crisp detail and, and contrast uh, I, I feel for certain subjects that the pinhole camera and cameras like as I say the Holger do produce a different look I do uh, like this picture uh, for that reason it has a, a soft um, look to it uh, there is detail there although it, it's got that uh, hallmark of the pinhole camera um, the tones are lovely and soft and we can see in the deeper tones the blacks that rather than being inky black they have a more velvety uh, look to them I like the picture as well because it's not got a set pattern and because I took the picture looking upwards uh, the nearer uh, flowers are darker uh, so we've got this uh, depth to it because the further we go out the lighter 
the picture becomes and also these uh, these plants that are coming in uh, from the bottom and the sides give a nice flow to the image so all in all I think it's turned out uh, very nice and I'm very pleased with it I'm going to put this uh, picture on eBay for auction to help uh, support my channel uh, and I'll leave a link in the description to that auction so if you want to uh, buy this picture and help support the channel please uh, bid on it it's uh, the picture itself is printed on Epson uh, cold pressed bright matte paper it's a nice uh, thick textured paper I printed it with a, uh, a warm tone and, and I feel that the actual tone on it although it's it's only very delicate it just adds to the artistic feel uh, it's 16 by 12 um, it'll come uh, signed and uh, titled and it'll be one of one I won't be selling any, any more of this picture so it will be quite unique so as I say if you want a chance of buying it uh, uh, go to the link in the description to the auction so once again if uh, you've enjoyed this video um, please give me a like or better still uh, subscribe to my channel and um, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video